Hello, welcome to Intentionally Waiting, Season 2, Episode 1. God, I am so glad to be back. Um, yeah, I took a six week break and now I'm back with season two of Intentionally Waiting. And yeah, <laughs> I'm looking forward to what this season is going to present. Um, I'm going to do a few changes though because I felt season one was really about me getting to the point where. Um, I can start to build on a firm foundation because I did, if you haven't already seen season one, I would say go watch it because really that kind of like shows the starting point where I was and how I did things and how I navigated my life and you know, and it got me to the position where I ended at the end of season one, which was realizing that um, I had to start my foundation with God. I just had to, for me. Um, and then not only start my foundation with God, but build upon that. So I have been building, and I've been building my faith in God. I've been building my desires in God. I've been building my love for God, you know, and his kingdom. Um, and I have been building the ability to rely on his word and believe it so believe it in god because yeah i'm so not gonna lie to you this is not an easy journey it's not an easy journey for me um i've come across so many things that have impacted me emotionally impacted me physically um, but nevertheless, this is a journey that I want to go on because for me, it's important that I have the family that, you know, God wants me to have. It's, it's just so important because I believe that not only is it important to my life, but it's also important to how I navigate life, I navigate this life. And I think the person next to me is probably one of the most important persons in my life, besides God, obviously he's he's important 100% in everything. But my husband is also very important, he's the next important person, and then the children that I have as well. And then the people I surround myself with, my friends, my family, um, and the things that I do, all of those things are so important, and um, I just can't go at it on my own. I can't um, do that journey on my own. So I'm showing up for me and for you throughout this whole season. And it's going to be a ride because um, I don't know what's going to happen week to week. Um, I am going to kind of like give you truths, like real truths, because I think that's so important um, that you understand where not even so much where but you know you understand my life journey so that it can actually be a testimony for you to be able to know that if it can happen to me it can happen to you if it's possible in my life it's possible in your life you know um i'm nobody special in that sense i'm just an ordinary woman um going through life in an ordinary way but having extraordinary experiences through God and if it happened to me that can happen to you and your life can change can turn around and you can live life from a totally different perspective and you can have joy and peace and all those things that God has promised in your life um, it doesn't mean that it's not going to be tough it's not doesn't mean that you're not going to have difficult days of course you're going to have I have difficult days I have extremely difficult days but I know that you know God turns everything around for my good um this year I am standing on Romans 8 28 um 
as a church, our church is standing on the same passage from the Bible. And it says, all things happen for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So, um, I love God. <laughs> and I believe I'm called according to his, pers to his purposes. So, I believe that all good things will happen to me. Everything will get turned around. It doesn't matter what the situation might look like now. But it's all going to turn around for good. For my good, for his good. So, let's go. Um, I want to talk about vision boards. Because I created my very first real vision boards. I've created vision boards before, but like not like this. Not a vision board with intent. Now, this has got some awesome intent in it. And I'm going to show you a photograph very quickly of my vision board that I am so proud of. Here you go. Isn't that just wonderful? Like, literally, I made that. <laughs> but the reason why I want to talk about vision boards, because I feel like they are so important in enabling you to go back to that why. You know, why am I doing this? Why is it important for me? Why have, you know, do I need to um, maneuver my life in a certain way? Why, why, why? Your vision board shows your why all over. And in my vision board, I have got, it's important to me that not only do I have a partner, but I'm actually married. That's so important to me because I believe that, you know, there's a separate, blessing that you get when you're underneath the covenant of marriage like god pours down blessings to everybody but there is a different type of blessing that you get when you're under that unity of marriage and that's what i want so so i want that blessing i want that blessing that god has promised and then i want that not just to be passed down to me but to trickle down to my children so i want a family that goes to church i want a praying family but i also want a family that is together. I want a family that is, that, that, you know, we do life together. I don't want my husband to be out there doing his own thing and me to be doing another thing. I want us to be, you know, whatever it is, whatever our purposes are, I want them all to be connected together. I want to spend time with, with, with him, time with my family. I want us to be in the moment constantly, like literally, <laughs> literally I want to be tired like that. <laughs> But hey, you know, I am 49 years of age. I'm going to be 50 in December. And um, yeah, I don't know when, you know, God's going to call me home. I don't know. So for me, for the next 50 years, I want to spend that time wisely. I want to spend that time in joy, in peace, in fun, in happiness. I want to have happy memories. I want to enjoy every single moment. I, I do, and, and you know, and I know that I'm going to go through trials, and I know there's going to be tribulations because it says it in the Bible, so it's not a surprise to me. But I want to be able to go through that with focus, with love, with integrity, with my family by my side, you know. And yeah, I do want some of the nice things in life. I want a, a beautiful home in the UK, a beautiful home in the States. I want to be able to go on family holidays. I want to go on, on holidays with just me and my husband. And I also want to have some nice cars and, you know, all those things. They're great, but they're not the end all and the be all. Like, what's really important is that, is, is the coming together of two people to form one because you're moving together towards a common goal. And that is so important to me. So, you may notice or you may not notice the person that I've actually put in my vision board. And no, before you start... That is, yes, that is Aaron Eckhart. And no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> this is not a picture. Although it is a picture. You know, I, I, I think he's absolutely gorgeous. And that is why he has made my vision board. Because I'm saying to God, God, I want a guy that looks like him. Like, literally, I want a guy that looks like him. I want a guy with his stature, with his face, with his you know, demeanour, with his presence, you know, if you haven't watched Love Happens, go watch Love Happens, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, but anyway, it's a-okay, um, <laughs> but the reason why I'm bringing this out is because, you know, 
that is surface level attraction. And we're talking about, when we're talking about the stages of intentionally waiting, we're talking about attraction, intention, commitment, engagement, and marriage. But what are you attracted to? Like, you know, for a long time, I was really attracted to, you know, the superficial, the, the, the outside, what's the outside appearance of, of a guy. You know, I wanted to be hooked in with somebody that made me look good. I wanted to actually be like a trophy girlfriend or wife with like, you know, a trophy husband. And when we walk down together, people go like, wow, that's a hot couple right there. Um, and I'm not saying that you should not be physically attracted to your partner because damn well, I want to be physically attracted to him. I want to be physically attracted to him. That's why I've got Aaron Eckhart on my photo because I'm saying to God, you know, that's just in case you don't know God, that's the kind of guy I'm attracted to. So, you know, if you're thinking about bringing somebody my way, I would love it to look something like that, you know. But what I'm trying to say is I can't stop there. I know that my attraction has got to be deeper, has got to be deeper. But how do I know what that is? You know, what is it that I should be attracted to? Because if I've been so used to just being attracted to surface level, then what else do I know? How, how, how am I going to be able to know the depth of what attraction that lasts is? Because you want an attraction that's going to last you. Because if you're going to spend 50 years of your life or more with one person, you, gotta, you better be attracted to this guy. Not physically, or not just physically, but in every other manner that you possibly can hold on to. And for me, what's important for me as a Christian is that, you know, I'm attracted to the fact that he loves God. I want to be attracted to the fact that he loves God. You know, I don't know, like, if you go to church, and you know sometimes when you're in church and you just see a guy and he's got his hands up in the air, and he's closing his eyes and he's praising God. Isn't that attractive? Like, <laughs> that is so attractive to me. That is like goalpost number one. Like, you, you know, <laughs> you're, you're kind of like moving, <laughs> moving in the right direction. But it's not just the fact that he loves God, but it's also that he's got to be wanting to grow with God. Got to be wanting to grow deeper with God. Got to be wanting to like continue with further prayer to God and put his trust in God. These are the things that I'm attracted to, you know? And I'm not saying that I want somebody that's just gonna be like, you know, um, in church 24 seven or, or every person that he meets, stopping them in the street and telling them that they need to repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. No, 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 that might float your boat. It's not floating my boat. But, you know, that desire to walk in God's way, that desire to see people heal, that desire to see people um, turn to God, that, that desire to walk out his purpose in God, that's what's attractive to me. That's what's attractive to me in addition to the way he looks. And then on top of that, what else is attractive is like, you know, is he walking in the ways of God, like the fruits of the spirit? Like one of the things that comes to my mind is self-control. Like if you're if you, the guy you're pursuing, or you're wanting does not have self-control, you're gonna have issues. And I don't want those issues. I want my guy to have self-control, you know? And when he wants to do something and he knows that that is not the right thing to do, to be able to lean back and go, you know what, God? Not my way, but your way, you know? That we can come together and we can, we can, we can prop each other up to the point that when both of us know that the one of the one of us is down and one of us needs like to be to be um to be held spiritually we can do that you know because in the bible it talks about do not be unequally yoked and for a very long time i was like yeah but you know i can date a guy and he may not be a christian but you know um I'm a good Christian, so when he sees my way, maybe he's going to want to become a Christian and he's going to see God in me. And um, so it's okay. So, you know, I can tweak that a little bit. But I've come to the realisation that, you know, not being unequally yoked is so important. And it's not just about, 
if you're Christian, don't date a non-Christian or don't marry a non-Christian. It goes the other way. If you're not a Christian, don't go marry a Christian because you will get frustrated. You will both be frustrated because when it comes to the most important things in life, you're not going to see eye to eye. Because one of you is going to be wanting to go on your knees to praise God and the other one is going to be so like like um, agitated because they, they can't see how you getting on your knees is going to help the situation. And you're going to be clashing. And we don't want to be clashing. No, no, no. We don't want to be clashing. So, so it's so important that, you know, you, you do get somebody that's equally yoked. And, and it's not just that the person is a Christian, but it's that the person is pursuing God in the level that you're pursuing God. Like, you know, if you're a baby Christian and they're a baby Christian, great. That's wonderful. But if you have got a level of depth with God, you don't want to be with a baby Christian because you're too far away, too far away from each other, you know, too far away from each other. You need to be with somebody on your level and God will bring that person that's on your level. But hear me when I say this, if you are there praying, God, I want somebody that loves you like Christ loves the church. I want somebody that puts God, you know, on, on uh, above all things. I want somebody that has got the depth of knowledge of God. You better have that yourself. You better have it yourself because if you don't have it and you're expecting that to be somebody else, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen because they're not going to want to be with you. So you're going to have to get work yourself. And this is why it's so important, so important to get your own level of depth first. And this is why I have had to do it for myself. Like, it's been hard. Yes, there have been days when I've woken up and I've gone, I don't really feel like seeking God today. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't feel like seeking God today. I don't want to do it. I've got other things to do. Or there are times when I'm like, you know what, God? This is too hard. This is too difficult. I don't want to wait. I just want to go out there and I want to pick. There are times when I feel like that. But I know that ultimately, that's not what I want. You know, I do want God's will for my life. And, and, and I'm willing to wait for it and show self-control and show patience and show all the things that God has said that we will get from being, from having or living our lives the way he wants us to live our life. So, so when I'm coming back to my picture, these things are important to me. And I tell you today, like, you know, as fine and as gorgeous and as handsome as Aaron Eckhart is, if he doesn't have any of those things, I don't want it. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's true. I don't want it. I don't want it because, yeah, the cars, he may have the cars, he may have the house, he may have, you know, he may even be a, a great guy because I, I've never met him. So he may be a great guy. He may be funny. He may be charismatic. He may, you know, he may, he may be the kind of guy that buys dinner. He may, he may have, I don't know, like all the fancy things that gives me butterflies. He may all, he may have all of that. But if he's not a Christian, if he's not seeking God, if he's not got the level of depth or more than what I have, or if he's not moving in the direction that God wants him to move in, and if he's not clear on his purpose for life, and, and, and if my purpose and his purpose are in two opposite directions, or if he's willing to settle for, you know, for things that he knows are not of God, if he's willing to do all those things, then I don't want it. And that's a difficult conclusion to come to because it kind of like cuts out so many people. Um, and then not only that, it makes it so difficult for you to find that person. So now I've got to put 100% trust and belief in God that he will bring that person to me. And this is the hard bit. This is the hard bit. Because, like, you just don't know when. You just don't know how. But there was a picture God showed me. Um, and he literally said, you know, open your hands. And he said, like that. 
So it's like, you know, there will be people that will come and they will go. Just like a bird. Lands on a tree, stays for a while and flies away. He's like, that will happen. He says, but your position is to be constant. Because some people are going to come into your life and they'll just fly away. Some people will come into your life and they will stay for a little while. They will graze, they will eat. And then they too will fly away. But there's going to be that one person that's going to come. And they're going to keep coming. And then they're going to keep coming. And then they will stay. And that will be the one. And that is so powerful because to be constant for everybody that comes into your life, not knowing whether that's the person that's going to come or whether that person's going to stay, that's a difficult thing. Because there are times when you're going to want to go like that. There are times when you're going to want to go like that. But God says, be like this. And that's my challenge, like, in this period. Because, you know, there are people that are coming. And for me, i got to be constant. And that is so difficult. Because sometimes I want to go like this. Sometimes I want to hold on to it and not let it go away. But I know I've got to be like this. <laughs> and that is so hard. But I've got to hold on to God's word. I've got to hold on to the fact that the right one will stay. No matter what it looks like. So, are you ready to journey with me as we go through season two of Intentionally Waiting? Last season, at the end, I ended with um, figuring out the name of what the podcast would be. And, you know, I'm not going to do that this season. This season, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you a prayer. And I want to show you this because... This is my journal, and um, I got this journal for my birthday last year. My girlfriends bought me this journal, and you know, one thing that I want to say is, they know me so well. Like, like I would never have thought in a million years that they would have bought me this. And when I opened my gift and I saw this, and not only does it have the tree of life in, so it's all about expansion, it's all about living, it's all about everything that I believe in, it's all about God, it's all about you know, just having the joy of what life brings. Not only that, but it's a journal for me to write things in. And, um, and I like writing, like, little notes and things, but I generally write them on, like, sheets of paper. And when I got this journal, I thought to myself, you know, I want to share this with you. I want to be able to use it, and I want to share it with you. And um, so I'm going to put my prayers in because this season I'm going to end with a prayer and I'm going to read those prayers out to you so you never know it might become a book but for now it's just a journal that I am writing my prayers in and I'm going to read to you the prayer for today dear God thank you for today I'm truly grateful. Help me to see in others what you see in them. Help me not to focus on the outward appearance of others, but to seek to go deeper and to see their true heart. Help me that I may fall in love with the characteristics of you in them, over and above the characteristics of their outward appearance. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks guys for popping in. It's been a pleasure to have you on board today. And I look forward to what this season is going to bring and sharing my life with you. In my search for my family, my love, and all things that come with it. <laughs>
<laughs> take care. Take care, guys. I will see you again next week.